Hi, everybody. My name is Curtis Mitch, and I'm with the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology. And welcome back to another weekday reflection on today's Mass readings. Today is Thursday, July 1st, and I want to look today at the first Mass reading, which is from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 19. And just a real quick side note, folks, if you feel like these reflections are beneficial to you, there's some value here uh, that you're growing, helping you to grow in your Christian life and that sort of thing, please help us out as well by hitting that subscribe button below along with the notification bell, and then you'll know right away each time a new reflection is posted. So today's reading from Genesis 22, verses 1 to 19, is the story known as the binding of Isaac, right? And that that description comes from a little detail in the story where, where Abraham actually has to tie up his son before he puts him on the altar of sacrifice, all right? And this is a remarkable event. Personally, for Abraham, this is the climax of his spiritual life in a lot of ways. God keeps asking sacrifices of Abraham. I want you to leave your home. I want you to sacrifice your animals to me. I want you to sacrifice part of yourself and be circumcised and in that way be consecrated to me. But today's episode, this is the mountaintop of it all, right? I want you to sacrifice your son. And it turns out, we learn in the very first verse that God is testing Abraham, all right? He's really stretching his faith to a whole new level. Well, that's true of Abraham personally, but even biblically, when we look at this episode in view of the entire Bible, it turns out that this is this is an event of monumental importance, okay? We actually have an advanced glimpse of the new covenant and the way it will be ratified in this particular episode today. You might say that, that Genesis 22 gives us a theatrical preview of things to come, of how the Messiah will go about his work of redeeming God's people and redeeming God's word. Now, how does he, how does he do that? This particular, this particular episode shows us that God points us to the future in two ways, by way of prophecy and by way of typology. In other words, there are words in this event that point into the future, and there are also persons, characters, events, and places in the story that themselves foreshadow the way things and the way the story will unfold when it reaches its climactic ending with the coming of the Messiah. So let's get into this text today and see what God has to teach us. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he cut wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took his hand, took in his hand the fire and the knife, and so they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said to him, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. And when they had come to the place which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him upon the altar of wood. And then Abraham put forth his hand. He took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, and behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. 
And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day on the mount of the Lord, the Lord will provide. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. And he said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only begotten son, I will indeed bless you. And I will multiply your descendants, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. And by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Now, we said that this story is is very much oriented to the future. It's related to Abraham's past because it's, it's, that, it's that climactic moment. It's been building up to this point slowly, and now we have that ultimate test of faith. But it also points forward, and it points forward in the two ways that I've already mentioned, by way of prophecy and typology. In other words, the future is both foretold and foreshadowed by both the words and the events of the text before us. Okay, so let's think first about the notion of prophecy. How do the words point us forward? Well, first, we're told uh, that Abraham says in response to Isaac, who says, well, where's the lamb? Why well, We seem to have everything in order here. We have an altar, we have firewood, and we have a knife, but we don't seem to have a sacrifice. And what does Abraham say? God himself will provide the lamb. Well, most biblical scholars think that this is part of the background to uh, John the Baptist's words. When he sees Jesus on the banks of the Jordan in John chapter 1, verse 29, for example, and he says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, that that's actually tapping into this ancient hope that Abraham says, God will provide a lamb for the sacrifice. All right, and the words of reassurance to Isaac are words of prophetic announcement, words that point us into the future and that tell us of things to come. But then also, the more important point is that when God responds to the obedience of Abraham, what does he do? Does he make a promise? Yes, in a sense he does, but it's much stronger than that because God swears an oath in his own name. He says, by myself, I have sworn that he will bless Abraham, multiply Abraham, and then ultimately, and this is the capstone on this on this the, this sworn pledge of the Lord, that by your descendants all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All right. If you read Saint Paul's letter to the Galatians, for example, in tra- chapter three, that oath that the Lord swears is telling us precisely about the mission of the Redeemer in the new covenant. The way in which God will bless all nations and restore them from curse to blessing, to bring them back into his family and into his friendship, will be through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so these words are also pointing us to the future. That's the prophetic side, where the words foretell. But then there's also the typological side, where the events foreshadow. All right. And in the typological side, what we see is that Isaac is understood universally in the Christian tradition. Isaac is understood as a type of Christ, right? Because he is the only beloved son of his father. He is to his life is to be made a sacrificial offering. All right. And the fathers of the church will sometimes point out the fact that just as Jesus carried the, the, the wood of the cross up the hill, so we actually see that prefigured when, when Abraham lays the firewood on Isaac. And Isaac has to carry the wood for his own sacrifice up to the top of the mountain. And then just to put the cherry on top here, the mountain itself is significant because this is a mountain in the land of Moriah. And in the Old Testament, we know from the second book of Chronicles that the Temple of Solomon was built on Mount Moriah, 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. Okay, so Jerusalem, in other words, 
crowns the summit of this mountain in Moriah where Abraham offered Isaac. It's the very place where Jesus himself will offer himself as the lamb that God provides. So Isaac is a type of Christ. But then Isaac is not himself um, slain on the altar, right? The angel intervenes before the knife is plunged in and before the blood is shed. And so what happens then? Well, there is, a, there is a lamb that's provided by God, a ram caught in the thicket. That becomes the animal of sacrifice. So the lamb is a type of Christ because the lamb actually sheds its blood. It is actually sacrificed to the Lord. But there's a little extra element here. Where does the lamb come from? Abraham and Isaac look over and they see that the Lord has provided a lamb. There's a ram with its horns stuck in a thicket. And according to the fathers of the church, like Tertullian and St. Augustine of Hippo, for example, right, this is an image of Christ crowned with thorns. All right, The lamb caught with its head in a thicket is itself a typological foreshadowing of Jesus the Messiah crowned with thorns and then offered in sacrifice on the altar. So this whole scene is, is, is prefiguring the crucifixion of Jesus. But there's one more little element I don't want to pass over. That in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, we also, we also sense that there's a little element that points forward to the resurrection, right? That, that points to the victory beyond the crucifixion. And that appears in Genesis 22 um, in verse 5. Notice what Abraham says to the servants. Remember, it's Abraham, Isaac, and, and his servants. Then Abraham said to the young men, those are the servants, stay here with the donkey and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. According to the book of Hebrews, that is an indication that Abraham has faith in God's ability even to raise the dead, right? He's told, he's commanded to sacrifice Isaac, but even before the angel stops him from plunging the knife, he's already exercising his faith in the belief that that his son will be returned to him, that they will in fact go back. He won't be coming back alone. And that for the book of Hebrews, that's a sign of the resurrection. It's a first intimation of that even greater mystery. So what is this reading about? What is the binding of Isaac all about? It is telling us the story of the crucifixion before we learn the story of the crucifixion. The whole scene, in other words, of a father who's handing over his beloved son to death to be a sacrifice, even having him carry the wood of that sacrifice up a mountain that we know from later biblical texts is actually the mountain of Jerusalem. All right, this whole thing is telling us in advance of the crucifixion of the beloved son of God, Jesus Christ. And so this, this, uh, this particular episode shows us that in the crucifixion, we have the intersection of both prophecy and typology. On the one hand, it's the words of the story, whether it's the words of Abraham that God will provide a lamb or whether it's the oath that he swore that he will bless all the nations. We learn from this episode, not only that God will bless all the nations, but we get a, we get a first indication of how he will do that. It will be by way of sacrificing a beloved son, shedding his blood for the salvation of the world. And that's the thing that will unleash this blessing upon all the nations of the earth. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. May the Lord bless you and keep you and give you his peace. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.